Welcome to the 2016 Drive Time slash Test Drive Now Year in Review. I'm your host, Steve Hannes, and this year I decided to invite my two sons, <laughs> Scott and Chris. No, actually, they're from the Limited Slip blog. They're a couple of auto journalists who do basically what I do, but in a blog format as opposed to video. They're local. We're all here in the 518 together. Welcome. I know I've been trying to book you guys for a long time, but you're a tough get. You're finally here. I thought it'd be fun to have you in here. So, you know, we basically test drive a lot of the same vehicles. So we can kind of go back and forth and talk about some of our favorites in each category, some vehicles that maybe disappointed us a little bit this year, yeah. and uh, see where you guys are at because you're a little bit younger and you skew your demos a little bit different than mine, right? You're a little more performance oriented. I'm a little more probably consumer oriented. Slightly. Sure. Yeah, so we'll get a little <laughs> bit of a different take on all of that stuff. But why don't you tell guys about your, uh, or tell everybody about the uh, Limited Slip blog. So Limited Slip blog, uh, limitedslipblog.com. Uh, Scott and I are college buddies. We've been doing this for four and a half. And five, you're two four thirds four of the Limited Slip blog. That's There's right. one third that's currently not here. That's, that's right. Correct. We, are, we yes. are down one person this evening. Right, right. So they yeah. can go to limitedslipblog.com. They can subscribe to your blog. Yes. And each time you guys post a new review, boom, there it'll be. Yep, yep. there it is. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's start off here. Now, first of all, I've got a list here. I created this today. I did 71 test drives in 2016, or for the past 12 months, I should say, almost all of 2016. So um, what I've done is here is I've kind of put a little star or an asterisk uh, next to each car that uh, brought about some sort, sort of special emotion in me, whether it was good or bad, um, just something that kind of stood out from the 71 test drives this year. So I'll throw out a couple of categories. I'll tell you what I thought. You guys can kind of tell me what your favorites were in those particular categories. And I'll start with SUV. SUVs are super hot right now. It seems like nobody's buying cars anymore. Crossovers and SUVs are where it's at. Automakers can't get enough of them and they're making as many as they can. And there's a lot of good ones out there, but a couple stood out to me. And, and the way I kind of tried to do this was to kind of bring you something maybe from the high end and then maybe something more from the, you know, every, uh, blue collar uh, end of the spectrum so sure. that you know we can get a, a nice mix here so first off the SUV that I chose is the SUV of the year the two were the Volvo XC90 which has won I think considerable awards and the new CRV which doesn't actually go on sale until later this month but I was able to do a, a pre-production test uh, last week the videos up as a matter of fact on my youtube channel please go and subscribe <laughs> and uh i loved it it was absolutely fantastic a real step forward for the whole crv uh genre just because it was built off of that civic platform and the right. civic did so well and now the accord's going that way yeah. soon as well next year i think honda's going to have a string of hits in their hand yeah i we had the civic too and Shares the same motor, I believe. That yeah, the 1.5 liter turbo. Five liter turbo. Yeah, 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 really impressive new motor. Um, yeah. You know, nice setup, uh, really nice car to drive. Yeah, there's not as much zip, obviously, with the extra weight of the CRV, so the performance level was maybe down just a notch. And so I'd suggest that it would be nice to see a two liter turbo in that, maybe a, yep. a regular automatic as opposed to the CVT. Maybe yeah. they'll do a CV or a CRV. Uh, SI someday or something like that where they could do something. <laughs> One can know. hope. Yeah, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. But that was excellent. And the XC90, um, I don't think you could, were you guys in that this year? We we had it actually in, I believe. Oh, yeah, you did. December last year. December last year. Yeah, you did last last year. Yeah. Well, that counts. That's within the past 12 months. It, it is. is. It was yeah. on our list of last year's uh, best cars. Um, yeah. Really enjoyed that, that SUV. Um, phenomenal sound system. Great seats. And I love the way they designed it. You know, Volvo is just nailing it with the design because they don't look like anything else. You no. see that, you know that's a Scandinavian design, you know it's a Volvo. Well, you, you had the R design. I had an R design. Yeah, that really had, stood out. We had the inscription, which is the, I luxury. Guess, the highest one you can right. get. Right. Um, Our design is kind of sporty, inscription is more luxury. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, the seats, I don't think anybody makes a better seat than Volvo. Personally, Volvo's seats are renowned for yeah. their comfort and they are phenomenal. Yeah, they are just phenomenal. Yeah, surprising power plant, too. I mean, to have both turbocharger and supercharger, yes, sur yeah, charge. supercharge, uh, turbocharged. They got a small engine, but it was enough for that vehicle. It was. And then I haven't driven the T8, I've been trying to book that for a while now, and I haven't had that. That's the plug in hybrid version. Yeah. Right. And That's I've heard very good things about that, too. Power or something. Did you know you can? I think you can actually spec one of those now well over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, they have the, uh, there's a, I forget what they call yeah, it. Yeah, there's a the, special name for that. Yeah. yeah, it's a new top trim package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, that's pretty crazy. Four seats. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's kind of funny, isn't it? I mean, it kind of uh, goes against convention that 
automakers, when they start to remove seats from the back, the price goes up. Have you noticed that? Yeah. You got to have that two seat configuration and then boom. Yeah. Well, Range Rover's yeah. the same way. They're, they have an autobiography. Yeah, right. Edition. The SUV. Like 200,000 yep. now. Yeah. And I think well, the SUV on our list that uh, CBU didn't mention is the Mazda CX-9. Right, right. Yeah. Very good choice. Yeah, that was probably like uh, one in Honorable one A mention. with these two. Yeah. Honorable mention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the CX-9 was fantastic. Yeah. And Mazda's also going upscale with their vehicles. And they that was really their first step in that way. Yeah. Yeah, very well, nice. Well, we had, we had the Signature, which was the Napa interior. It had right. a real rosewood yeah, in it. Yeah, I think we had the same yes. one, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, and so. um, we actually took it on a trip. Uh, That's we right, to, we went on a road trip to New Hampshire. Yeah, we took a road trip in that car. But the one demerit that I had with that car, no height adjustment on the passenger seat. I remember that, yeah. I said that to you. Yes. Actually, we were driving it together. Yes, yeah, we were in the, the car together. Thing. You're right, yeah. I remember that. I, why is that a thing? A lot of car companies do that. I know. And if it's not, it's Honda usually, too. yeah, um, what did I just have recently? Uh, oh, the Ford Fusion Sport. Mm -hmm. And it was an option. I mean, so it's still an option a lot of the times to get yeah. power on the passenger side, which seems kind of archaic in this day and age. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, and if you've, I mean, frankly, you know, usually it's a husband, wife or some pairing like that, right? Yeah. If the man's in the, you know, the woman's sitting in the passenger seat, like my wife sometimes does, and she's down on the floor and can't adjust it up, she gets ticked off. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. I, All right. I know. So anyway, next up, we are going to the sedan category. Now, sedan categories, I mean, obviously, it's very huge. I could be talking about a subcompact. I could be talking about something in the executive class. So True. I kind of brought in a few here that really stood out to me this past year. Even though sedan sales are down, they're obviously still popular enough to, uh, to have the manufacturers invest in them, and they're doing some great things. One of them, uh, for me, that really stood out was the Genesis G90. The Genesis is its own brand now. It's no longer uh, a Hyundai Genesis. It's the Genesis G90, which replaces the Genesis. V oh, excuse me, the Equus. The yeah. Equus is the G90. The right. Genesis is the G80. I know, that's confusing. That's what they like to do nowadays. But um, the G90 was just a huge step forward. I had heard some rumblings beforehand. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to read or watch any reviews before I test drive something. I don't like to do it much anyway, but I certainly don't like to do it before I test drive something right. so I don't get you know, swayed in one direction or another. Yeah, right. And I had heard a few rumblings about the G90 that, oh, it was just the Equus and it was just, re no way. This thing was phenomenal and it was a huge step forward. It was a great first step for the brand. Um, I absolutely loved it. Next up was the Civic, which I drove way back in January. So we're almost yeah. going back 12 months now, but. Can't can't disagree. Yeah, right, the I mean, Civic, we, that was we huge, had, right? That, that was, was on our list as well. The, the engine is exactly what that car needs. It feels yeah. faster, you know. Quicker, and that chassis faster. was so much fun to drive. I mean, when was the last time you drove a fun to drive Civic? It's been a long time. It's been a yeah. while. Yeah. And that really nailed it. So, uh, well, plus when you think about it, I mean, that's going to be the building block for the SI. Right. It's going to be the building block for the Type R. So, yeah. That, the CRV and the Accord. I right. Mean, right. I so, can't see them striking out with that if they keep using it. No. Right. No. It's going to be. And I think on the Grand Touring, some of the best headlights. Uh, yeah, in, in its class, yeah, in the market maybe, and right. still that was only twenty six, twenty seven thousand. Yeah, fully and it, loaded. It came with yeah. everything. Yeah, it has semi autonomous driving features in a car of that class. So they, I mean, obviously it's won all kinds of awards. So right. you know we're not breaking any ground here with how great it is, but uh, it, it's a phenomenal car and a great job by Honda. And of course, it's one of the top selling cars in the country. So it has um, it has uh, resonated with consumers. Right. Yeah. Okay. Our, oh, go ahead. Our honorable mention would be the uh, Lexus GSF. I think Lexus yeah. took their uh, phenomenal GS chassis and put that five liter V8 and uh, really elevated that car to something that... Uh, you guys really like that? I've never been a big GS guy. I know you guys are. Yeah. Um, but that's good. So the, the five liter works well in that? It does. Yeah. It feels more at home than it does in the RCF. Yeah. Um, you know, it feels more, a little more stately than, than what they were trying to do in a sport coupe. Interesting. Yeah. Well, the problem, the problem, cause I think I said it in the article and I've said it ever since the problem they had with the RC was that it was three chassis in one car and the car was too heavy. So the GSF is actually pretty much the same car. And I think weighs, I just read today they were they have adjusted the suspension for the new RC for 2017. I, I think I just saw did, a press yeah. release about that today. As a matter of yeah, fact, yeah, they. Kind so of I think that was a note. I think you've hit on something there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the the GSF I think was probably one of my top three this year. That the, the infotainment's still bad. 
the right. the mouse, the the controller oh, that they have. Bonk. Yeah. yeah it's, bonk. Yeah, it's not good. But uh, if you can overlook that, you got the torque vectoring rear diff. It's just. It's That's a good point you bring up, though. Uh, let me ask you a question. How much does a bad infotainment system sway you if you are in the market for that said car? I mean, I think it's a big deal. If, if it doesn't yeah. work for me, if it doesn't have what I want, I mean, it could really get me looking in a different direction. You know, and strangely, the worst infotainment systems seem to be in the most expensive cars. Absolutely. You know, I think the only, I think iDrive is actually pretty good now. Not um, bad. Now that they've come out with the touchscreen right. configuration that you can get in like the X5 and the 7 Series. Um, but uh, I, Command is terrible. I don't think it's very good. No. Definitely um, not. The Germans don't know how to do infotainment. They yeah. still have not contracted with somebody that can build them an infotainment system that's as easy to use as what the Asians are producing. I, I mean, I think Hyundai and Kia make some of the best. Yeah, I, I actually think the best is Uconnect. Oh, um, Uconnect is fantastic. From yep. Chrysler, uh, Fiat Chrysler. Can't argue that at all. I think that. And sometimes it's a balance of your ability to input. You know, Honda and a they have taken a step back now. We're going to have a volume dial. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. But before there was the no, no yeah. buttons at yeah. all, you know, that was an issue. It's, it's not a bad interface, but there are just some things you want tactile yes. buttons and feedback yes. for. I understand they want to give the interior a clean, clutter-free look. But guess what? We still need a few buttons and switches here and there because yeah. that's just how we operate. That's how our brains. And if you've got gloves on, sometimes it doesn't work when yeah. you touch the screen and... You know, and, and another thing I kind of don't like about certain infotainment systems, they have to be fast, right? They have to be able to, I mean, we're using our smartphones and our tablets and everything happens like this. You get into a car with a slow processor in it and you're sitting in your driveway, just even waiting to reverse out of your driveway while everything books, you know, sometimes they're embedding heated steering wheel and heated seats in these things. Yeah. Well, you want to start those before you back out, but you've got to wait for everything to, book, to boot up, yeah. hit the I agree button and so forth. That annoys the heck out of me. Yep. Yeah, and at least two menus to get to any setting you want. Yeah, yeah. Jaguar's guilty of that. Jaguar, they're still lost in the infotainment world. They've updated their system. They're getting there. I know they've got future versions planned, which are better. But man, they are, I mean, they put their heated seats in there and you have to sit there and wait and wait and press. I don't want to press 10 buttons. Just put it on the seat or something. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Uh, another car. Now, we've both driven this, I believe. The Q50 Red Sport 400. Yes. That car for me was the most transformative car. I went from Q50 Hater when it first came out a few years ago. I really bashed the car, it was terrible. It was. <laughs> and then I got the Red Sport 400 and I said, holy cow. They obviously listened to the feedback because I know a lot of journalists you know, were pretty hard on that car. And they did a lot of work under the skin, right? I mean, new engine aside, they have new suspension settings, uh, a totally new configuration on the steer by wire system. Right, yeah. So well, that's the biggest, that was the key. That's it. But now you can get it without it and still get right. the Red Sport, which... I would like to try that because both I, versions I, I had had the uh, the steer-by-wire system. I'm still not convinced on steer-by-wire. No, no not absolutely not. It, was no. it wasn't great, but it was far better. Enough where I would actually go out and buy that car. I, I, I would recommend it, as a matter of fact. Really? But the engine. Oh. Right? Steering aside, that new 3-liter Oh, turbo. man. That was awesome. The, the, the only thing I had with it was... I, yeah, it was fast. Um... Handled well. Mm -hmm. Neat. I'm not sure what it is. So, you know, it's not a 340 or a C43 competitor. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Or is it an M3, you know, ATSV competitor? I, I don't, I don't hmm. know. You know, because it's... Well, the price point power. was attractive on that compared to right. some of those cars you were just talking about. The price right. point is attractive. It is available. You can get the Red Sport with all-wheel drive. Right. But if you get right. a rear drive you still have the open rear differential. Yeah. Right. So it's right. this weird in between, right. is it a yeah. performance mark, is it not? I had some fun with that car. Yeah, you could really light those rear tires up on that thing. You Just took the one. traction control off. <laughs> Just one. Yo, hello. But yeah. Yeah, one. Uh, okay, uh, the other sedan, the last on my list of four here that um, really blew me away was the new Mercedes-Benz E-Class, the E300 4Matic. We took it up to uh, from here to Lake George, which is about an hour's drive. And it was the first car that I've been in with semi-autonomous features that were good enough where I literally just had to sit there and occasionally babysit the steering wheel. I mean, I, was, I, I, I arrived so relaxed on that trip, I couldn't believe it. It just did everything. I would signal, it would move over to the next lane. It would keep my speed. It would negotiate turns. Mm -hmm. I, 
Uh, it was just a phenomenal vehicle. Is it still set up where you need to have your A, some sort of hand on the steering you wheel? Can, you, you, you take your hands off, okay. and then after, and I don't know what the algorithm is, I don't even know if the time, maybe it was consistent, maybe it changed. See, it felt like maybe every five minutes or so, it would say, you know, hands required, and then you would just have to touch it. You didn't have yeah. to hold it or move it, just touch it and take them back off. It just wanted to know that you were there. Right, not sleeping. Right, yeah. exactly. And I'll tell you, I mean, that was some car, so good job by uh, Mercedes-Benz. Next up is the coupe. Ah, the good old coupe. You don't see many of them as, as, as like you used to, no. at least. No. Um, people aren't buying them as much anymore. As a matter of fact, the sports car market overall, I've read, is definitely down. I think people want one vehicle that can do everything, and now we're finding that they right. can build SUVs or crossovers with suspensions and with engines without sacrificing a lot of fuel economy that can kind of split the difference between utility and sport and so people are you know why go out and buy a second car yeah but anyhow that being said i was able to drive now i didn't have this for a full week and i didn't have it here but i was able to get into the nsx for a few hours mm -hmm. uh on a special event downstate and um wow i was really really impressed with that car not just because it's so high tech with the hybrid system but it just worked well. I mean, you hear hybrid and sports car, you're thinking, okay, somewhere there's gonna be a gremlin, somewhere there's gonna be a trade-off. I didn't find it if it existed. Now, I didn't have it for a full week again, but that car blew me in its style, holy cow. You see that thing coming down the road, it looks 10 times better in person than it does even in pictures and video. I know the price tag is high. I know that's turning some people off, but that is a car that is a true exotic. Yeah, I really like the looks. I know Scott disagrees with me on that. You don't like the NSX? I, I, I can't love the design. Oh. I can't. I, this hurts. It's it's the, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I can't love. I like the front. I don't like the back. I don't know. It's, huh. It's interesting. Yeah. I saw you drive it. It looks phenomenal on the road. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, they, they took their time developing it. I think they oh, got I, yeah. a platform it took that a works. Time. It took yeah. a long time. How many times did we see a debut exactly. a new piece of the NSX? Yeah. Yeah. Six. The only thing that it kind of stood out to me was the interior on that. You could tell that was done in the early part of development and it kind yeah. of stayed there. I was like, okay, it, it this is not a $200,000 interior, Yeah. but that car, I mean, heck, I don't want it if I could. <laughs> what, uh, what'd you think of the motor on the car though? Not, not the electric motor, right. the actual V6. I'll motor. tell you what, it was great. I mean, it had so much instantaneous power, right? Sure. There's electric motors, so you know you're gonna get that right off the line torque, right? But I mean, for the spots that we had it in, you know, we, it just kept going. I mean, it just, it, it felt like it wasn't gonna stop. Mm -hmm. I don't know how fast it can go. I don't know, is it a 200 mile per hour car? Probably is. I think it is, I think it's like 202 Yeah, or yeah, like I can totally buy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just felt like it wasn't ever gonna give up. And it was comfortable. You know, it still had the accurateness to it inside. Sure. So it was comfy leather seats. It was controls you were accustomed to and easy to use. So, it, you know, it's kind of like, the everyday man's, you know, like, you know, you can take that to your Acura dealer and it's going to be bulletproof. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's going to be easy to repair if it needs something or easy to service. It's not like buying a Ferrari or Lamborghini, which is for most people going to be a pain in the butt. Yeah. Right. And they're giving them out to Acura dealers. You know, it's not like something like Ford is doing with the GT where it's a, right. you know, they have to call you. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to hear about it. Well, yeah. the dealership here has one. If you're interested, <laughs> Steve. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the other car on that list uh, for me was the new Camaro SS, and you guys... We had the RS. We had the Camaro the RS. RS. The V6. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Really, actually, super impressive car. The V6, less weight than the V8, so you get a better balanced chassis. Right. I, I mean, underneath, sharing the platform with the ATS, you know, leveraging some of the suspension work that they've done and put into the ATS V, so, uh, you know, you get that, that awesome GM suspension. Definitely. Um, the V6 whales, man. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. Yeah, um, which is tough yep. to say about a I've V6 heard. these days. Yeah, yeah, that was probably the best V6 that we've had this year. Yeah. If you're looking for strictly the best driving pony car out there, excuse me, right now, it's the Camaro SS Has or a Camaro, whatever version yeah. of that it is. Yeah. I love the Challenger. That's always kind of been my favorite, but yeah. for other reasons. But yeah. from a, pu a pure driving standpoint, that Camaro is they're giving you a ridiculous amount of car for the money. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think it's a muscle car anymore. I think it's a yeah, sports exactly. car now. Yeah, that's yeah, a no, good point. I, I, yeah. I that's think the Challenger point. is the last true muscle car. Yes. Now, right? It has that right. feel. It has that persona. It has that sound. Yeah, it does. The Mustang has moved into the Grand Touring I think environment. It's, I think it's in between. Because we had the Hellcat, all right, this year. We had the Challenger Hellcat. 
that car is ridiculous in every sort of way that you can imagine. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that car for me was a little more surprising. Like, not, not the speed. I mean, you expect that. It handled better than I thought it was going to. Because we've had, we had the Scat Pack shaker. We had, you know, the, just the regular Scat Pack. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the same suspension that the Hellcat does, you know, the, right. and the different driving modes and everything like that. That car was better at doing other things <laughs> other than going straight. I had the I Charger thought. Hellcat, and I'll tell you what, that would be scary. If you stand that throttle at the wrong time. Oh, yeah. I oh. mean, the rear oh. end of that car broke loose Absolutely. so easily. I, that even around the town, I could almost not feather it soft enough. Yeah, that I don't think there's a car on sale today that is more under-tired. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's got 275 yeah. rear yeah. You're right. You're yeah. always thinking, right, if I kick, if that supercharger kicks in at the wrong time, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be going the wrong way. If that car is in the wrong hands, that is oh, yeah. a... Uh, a death knell for somebody right there. Yeah, but that was a good one, and um, we had the... Oh, going back to the Mustang. We had the GT. You had the GT. Yes, yes. Did you have the yellow one with the performance package? I had a red one with the performance package. No, I had a California. I think yeah. mine was the California ah, version. Okay, see, we had a GT non-performance package with an automatic, and we were disappointed. Hmm. I think the yeah. transmission really let that car down. Yeah. If, if you're getting a Mustang, and I've said this before, I'm not a save the manuals guy necessarily. I, yeah. I'm okay with automatics in the right cars at the that's, right time. That's him. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, and that's fine. That's fine. You know, but I, you know, I'm, I'm all for progress. That's fine. But if I have a Mustang, I still want it with a stick shift. I'm Absolutely. sorry. Absolutely. It's just the way yeah. that car should be. Yep. For me. Now, if you want an automatic, I'm not going to argue with that. I think the Hellcat's automatic was excellent. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Eight speed versus the six speed in the Mustang. It, you can't really compare them, but now you can get the Challenger with all-wheel drive. Ooh, I know. Oh, yeah, that'd be GT. perfect for us. Yeah, yeah. All right, next up, and then this is a, a hands down, no argument. This is just you know, again, stating the obvious. In the minivan category, the Chrysler Pacifica was just phenomenal. Looks good. It looks great. Our buddy Ralph over there at FCA did a fantastic job with the design team, and yeah. um, I mean, he styled it so it's something that you're proud to get out of now. But not only that, I mean, they've been innovating with special features and things for a long time. And they're doing things that even like the Odyssey and the Sienna still aren't doing, you know, with the stow and go seating and just the clever um, uh, infotainment system in the back with the two screens that Maddie absolutely loved. Sure. It drives great. Now there's a plug in hybrid. I hear today that um, they're expecting to uh, unveil an all electric version at CES next month. Yeah, so, they actually ditched the Detroit Auto Show. Yes, and yeah, no Chrysler uh, presser this year. Yeah, and I'm just not sure that we've gotten over the social stigma of a minivan. Right. right? I mean, crossovers now fit in that world. You don't have a full size SUV, which you know that during the the gas crisis, right. nobody wanted those. The minivan was a '90s kind of idea that hasn't really come back yet. They no. couldn't pen a term that wasn't minivan, though? Well, I'll tell you what. You talk to anybody who owns one, and it's like a microwave. You know, like when you introduced you, like, your grandmother to a microwave <laughs> oven. Yeah. Like, there's no going back because yeah. they love the flexibility. Mm -hmm. Being able to haul anything in it and fold those seats down and so forth. And uh, I loved it. I'll tell you what. If I had to have a family vehicle, that Pacifica would be very high on my list. Loved it. Okay. Okay. Truck. Now, you guys have driven different trucks than I have driven thus far, I believe. Yep. And for me, I absolutely loved the Ridgeline. I couldn't believe how far Honda advanced that from the previous generation. I don't love the styling. Nobody does. Sorry, that's just the way it is. But that thing is clever. It's powerful. It rides like an Accord. Um, it had so many clever features that none of the competitors, like Frontier, Tacoma, Canyon, so forth and so on, they're not doing any of these things. And it just met all the needs, I think, of 90% of your residential truck owners who don't need a half ton. Yeah, I think the Tacoma was left alone in the market for so long. You know, the Nissan Frontier stuck around. Um, still sticking around. Still sticking around. Yeah, I think it's, is it next year? I think finally we're going to get into Frontier. GM, right. Certainly. And I'm looking forward to that. GM got back in the fray, but there hasn't been any challenge to that market. There hasn't been any innovation. And Honda comes along. 
Right. With that, uh, you know, rear bed that has the... The speakers that you can use for tailgating, the tailgate that still goes out and down, right. the in-bed storage, which was all improved upon in a number of ways. The multi-way rear gate. Oh, and the way it drives, I mean, you're driving that around, it, it, it drove well, like a car. We took it on a trip up to Canada this year. It looks year. like a pilot. It, yeah. It drives like a pilot. Yes, yeah. Yes. It's not It's not pretty, I'll tell you that. You, no matter where you, what angle you look at that thing at, it's not a pretty vehicle. I but. actually don't mind it. <laughs> I had the black edition, which is the, I think it was a limited edition launch edition, or maybe it was available throughout the entire model year, but um, yeah. anyway, well, absolutely we, love that. We had uh, the Titan XD. Yeah, I had that. Uh, how'd you like that? Didn't love it as much as I thought, and I was a big Titan guy, first generation, yeah. so I was expecting a lot from the second, and... Yeah, this generation the kind of let me down. Mm. I, it, it wasn't, you know. And it's so odd. I mean, I kind of get why they went for that size to kind of do something on their it's own. A weird, kind of between half ton and it's three weird. quarter. It's a tweener. It's definitely yeah. bigger than a than a. It's more truck than a lot of people would need. I'll tell you that. Yeah, but trucks are really getting bigger, right? People are buying trucks with you know full size second rows and then right. you know either a standard bag configuration or like the 250 we had the full size bed oh my god you know where you need two parking spaces yeah oh. i've got a version of that in my driveway right now not quite as big i have the platinum with the six and three quarter foot bed i think it is yeah but still i mean that's not the kind of vehicle that i would want to use on an everyday basis you know if i had a real need for it absolutely but if that is also going to be the vehicle you take grocery shopping every day you're absolutely nuts it's a little bit too commercial grade it's got 900 pound feet of torque or more than that. It's, it's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, well, with the, with the eight foot bed, everywhere is a three point turn. Oh, so yeah. at I least mean, a three point turn. You know, we, I was entertaining one night and we went and picked somebody up and they got in the back and there's more room back there than a long wheelbase Mercedes S class or a seven series. You could fit 10 people in the back seat of that thing. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you could turn it into a clown car, exactly. And now we're, now we it's have the a, same thing. Right, now we have a full size commercial grade truck with a with a giant sunroof yeah and yeah. Yeah. heated roof. front and rear seats yeah. I mean, massaging massaging, massaging seats, seats right yeah. and cooling and you know oh and every kind room. of driver assistance feature plus that cool new uh around view camera yeah yep. which without that how you would park that uh, I, I confidently don't, i don't know that i'm not big on the safety features and everything but i would not buy a truck without blind spot monitoring, lane keep yeah. assist, any sort Especially of... Especially with those trailer tow mirrors, oh they're like God. out to here. They're, well, they power extend too. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. They go on another yeah. six inches. Yeah. Right on. But I would not, with the, the truck we had, the the longest yeah. truck you can buy. 24 feet. Yeah. I would not want to try to back up to a trailer without right. that camera, without right. that no. trailer assist. No. Good point. Okay, um, let's go to the convertible category. I drove a number of convertibles this year, but there were two that really stood out to me. And I think this just proves, for the first one at least, that cars can be fun and they don't have to be, you know, this, they don't have to show you their resume to impress you. They can be fun in a number of ways. I had the 2017 Volkswagen Beetle Dune convertible. Okay, it was a pre-production model at the time. Yeah. Out of all the cars I drove this year, do you know that car turned more heads and got more men to ask me about it than I ever would have thought, right? I mean, that's typically considered an effeminate car, right? The new Beetle, then a convertible yeah. version of it. Not so with this. Jacked up suspension, the cool paint job, that sand dune color. Yeah. Um, we had a beautiful day, um, Maddie and I, out to uh, Schoharie County one day in that. And just, in the sun, you know, the sun was there. It's was, it was just a fun car to drive. I just really enjoyed it. See, that's interesting because we had the coupe and nobody looked at it. <laughs> yeah, maybe the convertible made the difference. No, I, I don't think, know. I think the color maybe was, was one me. thing. Um, yeah. I was I was disappointed that that car had the regular it needs the, 16 it needs transmission. The, it did not have right. the, the dual clutch. Yeah. Yeah. I was also disappointed it didn't have the, the higher horsepower motor. Yeah, that too. Because we had the, we had what, the, what were they called? But does it need that? I mean, that that's kind of where I was going initially. <laughs> Can't you have some fun in a car like that? Can't you just have fun? Yeah. Are you guys just too <laughs> <laughs> performance oriented? I take a, no. I take a GTI or a Beetle Dune. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Yeah, but would you have as much fun with your kid with the top down? Oh, you don't have a top to put down. That's it. Yeah, that, we didn't have the top. So that down. would take it out of the convertible. Or the other kid. convertible that I had was the uh, Mercedes <laughs> SL, the new updated SL. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I've driven a million of those over the years. That car just always leaves me wanting one when it leaves. And I had a lot of people argue, I think, in the comments section of my YouTube video that that, you know, oh, this car, who needs that anymore? You've got the AMG GT. 
two different cars. I don't know how people don't understand that. And this is still kind of that elegant roadster, top down, lots of trunk space, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. get out of town kind of car. So anyway. Well, plus it's a hard top convertible, right? Yeah. The AMG GT is a soft top convertible, the new one that's coming out. Speak it's, of the truth. It's... Sure, you can get the same engine if you get the higher horsepower ones, but the actual essence of the SL is the 450 and the 550, and those are the cars that everybody buys. You don't see the SL 63s, Not and much, the 65s. No. You really you don't. don't see that. We didn't drive the SL on Twitter. This year. That's about it. No, we didn't drive the. But SL. I did have the opportunity to take one out for a spin after lunch, and I can tell you, it is the perfect after lunch drive. Yes, car. isn't it though? <laughs> In the fall, you've got the neck scarf. Exactly. Mine had I think that it was tongue. the fall when you drove that too, wasn't it? Or it was early, I think it was early, early spring. spring. Yeah, whenever it was cold out. Magic, mine had the Magic Sky roof in it, you know, so you could like hit that button and it, it, it would become transparent. And yes. then, oh, it's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I just love that car. Okay, onto the uh, wagon category. Station wagons, Everybody's been saying for the past, oh, station wagons are back. Americans, more into them. <laughs> I guess maybe we're starting to see more of them. Or, But here, manufacturers here are scared, so they don't use the name wagon. They call them anything but they could possibly call other than wagon. But the two that stood out to me this year, one of them has now switched brands. It was the Scion IM, which I thought was a great job of Toyota to import that and sell it here. Now, of course, Scion's gone and it lives on as a Toyota. It is, it is our brand loss of the year. Is that Scion, right? Uh, yeah. I don't think we lost any other brands other than Scion. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it this year. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I think Mitsubishi is always teetering on the brink. I've been writing them off for years. But, um, <laughs> they keep coming back for more. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the Scion IM was a great combination of affordable price, spaciousness, and that had a real European tune chassis. I had a stick shift, and it was fun to drive. Ah, so you had the stick shift, yeah. we had the CVT? Oh, that's oh, probably a big difference. Is, that, is it a CVT or is it an auto? I think it's an auto. No. I think it's a 60. Yeah, I think it's a CVT. Underneath it, it is the Corolla. That's it is. So, As a matter of fact, I think it's now called the Corolla IM. It is. I was just offered one, and I might have declined. <laughs> It's a good car, man. It really is. And the other wagon that I really fell in love with, and it's a slightly different take on a wagon, is the Volkswagen Golf Alltrack. I think anything built off that Golf platform is an absolute winner. All yep. of Volkswagen's best vehicles derive from that. And the Alltrack gives you the all-wheel drive that the Sport Wagon doesn't have. And it's just a good, solid wagon that's fun to drive, cool looking, and gives you a little more ability to go somewhere. Yeah, I love the way, I love the design. I love German interiors, right? I think the, the Volkswagen interior is really top notch for- And they've got, their technology's getting better too. Those little screens still look like they're ancient. Oh, yeah. When you get in there, there's actually good features. Yeah. yeah. And it's easy to use. They have just, Apple CarPlay now, don't they? Apple CarPlay, absolutely. Right, yeah. Well, we had the GTI Performance this year. Uh, yes, we had the GTI two-door. Which, which is defunct. The week, yeah, that, the week they brought it to us, is the same week that they put out the press release that said- I knew was, somebody had no ordered one and was disappointed. Yeah, they wanted the two-door and they couldn't yeah. get it. Yeah, that was, uh, you like that. I enjoy the GTI. Yeah. I do. Nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, and I did drive a, a, you know, I usually drive a handful of exotics every year. This year it happened to be an Italian-themed month. I think it was back in June where I went from uh, Maserati to Alpha to Lambo or some combination thereof. So I, I drove three exotics. Uh, maybe more, I guess, but those are the three that really stick out. And the one, of course, that, you know, obviously for me was the Lamborghini, the Huracan Spider, as people, Huracan Spider. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it was the all-wheel drive version. I didn't have the rear-wheel drive version, which is now available. But uh, just a phenomenal, I mean, it was one of those experiences for me that I had waited my entire life. It was the first Lamborghini I had ever driven of any type, anytime, anywhere. This is the kid that used to have the posters, you know? I know you're a big Lambo guy. We went yeah. out in it briefly. Yeah. Um, but that car, it, it, it not only met, it exceeded my expectations of what I had been thinking about for the past 40 years. Well, that's good because usually they say don't meet your heroes, right? Exactly. And I was scared about that. You're exactly, and I yeah. brought that up in the piece, but it turned out that uh, I was all in on that car. Right, because we had, we had the Alpha, the 4C Spider. Spider. We had a right. different one than you did. Uh, we had a yellow one. Um, what did you think of that? I had the coupe last year, right? and I was like, this is cool. It's raw, it's organic, there's no power steering, I love it. And whatever happened between this year and or last year and this year, that roof was cheesy. I hated having to take it off and roll it up and throw it in the back. 
It's and, all that fit back there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it didn't. It, it just didn't elevate the experience for me having the roof off that way. And I love convertibles, but it just didn't. And I kind of walked away from this week going, oh boy, you know, maybe if I had it for a weekend car or something. But that car gets tiresome pretty fast. Uh, yeah. I agree. Um, I think we had a bad week. We actually got to drive it in the snow. Yeah, it was exciting. <laughs> I, drove it, I drove it in the snow uh, on the throughway and Berkshire Spur going over the uh, river. So that was nice. Yeah. Um, but what the the problem I have with it is, it's phenomenal on a back road. Yes. If you have absolutely nowhere to go, it's a great car. Right. If you're commuting to work, you're going to hate it. Oh after yeah. Just one day. Really. The exposed fasteners, the uh, yeah. the carbon fiber monocoque, the loudness, that cheesy, I mean, unbelievable. Was it an Alpine stereo or something that you couldn't hear even if you turned it you all the way yeah. out? And it looked like you had gone and gotten just an it aftermarket. Was a, it yeah. was. I looked it up. You could buy it at Best Buy for like 200 bucks. <laughs> it was it, crazy. I think it's it was an afterthought. Part. They built this beautiful body. Yeah. They put this tiny Great turbocharged right. you know, engine in it. And then they said gotten the stereo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're a rich man and can afford to put one of those in your multi-car garage for a few yeah. weekends every year, Good for you. go for it. It's yeah. awesome. And steering, you don't need steering is great. You don't need oh, the steering is phenomenal. You don't even have to turn the radio on. No, no. no. Especially no. You can't especially hear it anyway. anyway. No, you can't. Yeah, that's it's that's so loud. Absolutely true. Now, what we were going to get into next was uh, vehicles that disappointed. I'm not saying they're bad vehicles. I'm saying that before I got them, I had some sort of expectation, and after right. I they left, they did not meet those expectations for whatever reason. So maybe I set the bar too high, maybe they weren't a good match for me, or maybe they just weren't very good. But anyway, I'm gonna throw out a few to you guys, whether you've driven them or not, you can give me yours too. Um, and I'll go briefly through this list. Number one is the Jaguar F-Pace. Everybody loves it, right? Oh, it's the greatest. I just felt like they went a little too hardcore with that car trying almost to prove too much to people that when we make an SUV, we're gonna make it a Jaguar. When I think the owners of that vehicle wouldn't mind a little bit more utility, a little more softness to the ride, that thing was just like a little bit on the edge. Too much, I think, for everybody running out and going, I can own a $40,000 Jaguar, cha-ching. Then they're gonna get it, they're gonna like, hmm, maybe I could have spent this money better somewhere else. Um, and you did not drive that yet, right? No. Okay. The uh, next on my list is the Cadillac CT6. Uh, looks phenomenal. We've been seeing it in ads like for two years, Cadillac's been flaunting that thing out yep. and about. Looks great. It just didn't drive the way I thought it was gonna drive. It just didn't have enough of anything. And the price tag on it was fairly substantial to the point where I just didn't think it was commensurate with its abilities to act like a big executive sedan. Now, did you have the 400 horsepower rear wheel steer, all that? Uh, I had the twin turbo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't recall if it had the rear wheel steering. I think it was fairly loaded, so it probably did. I don't recall that being a, a nuisance or an advantage either way. Yeah. If it did. Because they always flaunt it as being you know, the most athletic of the large. Yeah, trains. no, 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 it didn't. As a matter of fact, I think Cadillac is starting to disappointingly kind of go in the opposite direction. I think they were on this climb and then after the ATS, their newest products, I don't know. They're just not hitting the mark for me like Cadillacs once did. Maybe it's just me. Next up, the Chevy Malibu. Do you guys drive it? No. 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 Um, it what looks, I don't, it, it's hideous looking. You had, yeah, the, you had the black, didn't you? No, that was, that the, was Impala. the Impala. Yeah. We had I, the Impala. Oh, the I Midnight Edition. The Midnight Edition. Yeah, I drove yes. that. Yeah, that yeah. was kind of fun. Okay. That video's done surprisingly well on my YouTube channel. When I did that video, I thought nobody's gonna, it's over 100,000 <laughs> views, easy. Wow. So wow. people are interested <laughs> I guess for what so. it's worth. But the, uh, the Malibu, I remember being at the reveal of that. I can't remember if it was in Detroit with mm -hmm. Martin Royce or if it was in uh, mm -hmm. New York. But either way, I remember being right there and it came out with such fanfare and oh, this is gonna re revitalize the mid, you know, our, our Malibu is finally gonna. I think it looks like a fish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so hideously ugly. And despite the fact that mid-sized sedans are not doing well, I think there are some real winners in that segment, mm -hmm. and I don't think the Malibu is one of them. There no. you go. No. Next up for me, and now, and I think I just read this made car and drivers 10 best. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure, but I think I saw something. The new X1 did not 
advance itself other than in its appearance, which went from that ugly little first generation thing we had to something that looks like a BMW now. But the drivability of it, I was like, whoa, they, I mean, they changed the all wheel drive system on it, right? The, uh, um, it's bit, let's just, system. let's just put it this way. It's based on a countryman. I think I, I have driven one. I think it is leaps and bounds better than the old one. I, mm, I, I'm going to disagree really? with you. Well, that's good. Yeah, See? Yeah. That's good. Um, that's fine. You know, depending on how you option it out, you know, you can get all sorts of different packages and things with BMW. But I think it's size-wise, interior-wise, size-wise, and drivability-wise, I think it's better than the X3. Uh, interior room, leg room, it, even if you get the, rec like they have the sliding seats, mm -hmm. uh, is on par with an X3. And so is the rear cargo room. And it's got the whole under tray there. Cause I thought the power train was incredibly disappointing. Really? Yeah. Well, I, it's a mini engine. Yeah. Of. I don't know. It just, it just didn't click for me. But if it's making car and drivers 10 best list, somebody yeah. must disagree with me. Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And last on the... Well, actually, I'm going to... One and one A here. Uh, the GMC Acadia. Now, we took a, a, an Acadia Denali to Vero Beach, Florida from Albany. It's a long drive, obviously. Cool. Wife, child... 2013, I love, I and mean, at that point it was kind of aging. Yeah. But it was sized well, that 3.6 was perfect, it looked cool, and the new one came out, and what did they do? I mean, they shrunk normal. it down, it looks like, actually the, the, the looks, make it look older than it even used to. It, like, I don't know, it didn't advance it in any way. Um, there weren't as many new features in it that I thought I would probably see in a car that went from being, what, like 10 years on the market, if maybe more. To a new version, kind of looks so, like an Equinox. Yeah, and I never liked the looks of that either. No. Um, no. So the Acadia again, it wasn't bad. It just didn't go as far as I thought it was going to go with this next one. And I just have to bring up this one too, guys, because I know you. Now this is a funny story. We took a Toyota Land Cruiser to Maine on vacation this year, right? <laughs> if there is one video that draws the ire of my viewers more than any other, it is this Land Cruiser video, which totally surprised me. Steve, you do not understand <laughs> how wonderful the Land Cruiser is. It's the best <laughs> SUV ever built. We drive it over sand dunes and down rubble-strewn streets. And, it do and these are my international viewers, mostly, and I love them. And I'm glad that they're there to watch the videos. But I have to make the point time and again, and I think I did in the video itself, this isn't the version you're buying overseas. No. The one that's marketed here and sold for nearly $90,000 here is something that uh, doctors drive to work, families take on vacation, blah, 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 right? So, man, people are ripping me. You don't, you know, you don't grade a Land Cruiser on how it, you grade it. Uh, yeah, but they gave me a key fob that belongs in a Corolla, and it's not, oh, but they're indestructible. Well, really? Because the frame, as it turned out, was cracked from the previous driver, so they're not really indestructible, <laughs> I which that. created a squeaky suspension on the right side. Uh, no floor match, you had to pay extra for them. And this was the refresh year for this thing, and it was like, hello, you know, are you gonna pay any attention to this thing? Or are you just gonna keep bilking people out of 90 grand? Well, see, the interesting thing is we're actually getting the Lexus counterpart of that. Uh, and I made my point that at that point, why not just buy the Lexus? At least it'll look cool, you know? Yeah. It's well, only a few thousand dollars. That's debatable, part. too. I'm <laughs> yeah, not so sure that Lexus face is the best thing on the planet. It, hey, it's. It fits better on the LX than it does on almost every other one. I, so. I agree with you there. It just was a letdown. The packaging, totally inefficient. And I made the point in the video that I think 90% of people would be better off with a Highlander. More space, more usable, more flexible. Yeah. Yes, I understand, Land Cruiser owner. There's a few <laughs> of you out there that are taking them off-road. Maybe three. Maybe, yeah. They only sell like... 60 a month or some ridiculous thing. So there's not many of you out there. So don't that's, keep telling that's me That's a lot, there. actually. That's more yeah, than I yeah. thought. Whatever it is. Um, and then um, last on my list here, guys, something I wanted to touch on was the um, the BMW 7 Series, the 750i xDrive, which I drove, and that was almost a year ago as well. But um, just for a wow factor, I didn't love the way it drives. I thought it was pretty cool. But man, just to sit in that car, especially at night, with all that interior ambient lighting and stars and pads and, I mean, just... Made a phenomenal impression. How much of that is BMW and how much is Rolls Royce? You know. Well, yeah, right. Because the yeah, when I first saw uh, the star ceiling in that, you know, was right out of the Rolls Royce uh, something or other that I Ghost, drove. I think. Right? Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had the Ghost. Was that this year too? No. No. Good. I, <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought that up. But yeah. uh, 
Yeah, no, the seven's good. We had uh, an S sixty three, not too long ago. No, it's still the same car. Yeah, uh, that interior is pretty neat. Yeah, it's a nice interior. It's a good. But BMW went crazy with the lighting, which I oh, think yeah. the light just gives you that ultra wow factor. Yeah. Everybody that got in that car that I took around was just in awe of it. Yeah. Yeah. That and the the new control interface. Yeah. They actually have metal buttons to, yeah. to press. I think just totally different than anybody else is used to in the segment. So what bummed you guys out this year? What did you get when you when you, when you ordered it? You were like, I'm gonna love this thing, and then when it left, you were like, huh? You know, I, I went out to the um, the new Elantra press launch, and and oh. I really enjoyed the car at you. launch time, um, but then we happened to have one back to back with the new Civic and right. the Mazda three, and. In a comparison of its peers, it was really a letdown. Totally. I think uh, yeah. I think it was underpowered. Um, I think it was overpriced. Um, and the design went from cool to uh, in yeah. my mind. Like I, I think that even went backwards. And I think that design in that car, if you remember, that was uh, Fluidic Sculpture 1.0 oh, or whatever. Yeah. And that really sold that car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this new and I drove the Eco as well. Not impressed. No. Well, the to be fair, the turbo's coming. Right. That. Supposedly is better. The Elantra the, Sport or something. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sport. Sorry. We'll see. So we'll see on that one. Um, I, I I hate to say it. I have to throw the Alpha in there. Yeah. I it it it's it's great. It for that yeah. very see, short amount of time. Right. And, and nobody's you know, buying those either. As it turns well, that's out, the sales thing. are I, <laughs> Interestingly, I was actually looking at one for a while. Really. Because I I loved it. I loved it. I wanted something that had no power steering. It has yep. no power steering. Right. No ABS, doesn't have ABS. And it just focused. I didn't want another person with me because they wouldn't like it. Um, and she didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a consideration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. It is. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody liked it. Oh, it was cool to look at. It sounded okay it when you were in it. It didn't. It doesn't sound good inside. That's the, that's the misconception with that car. Everybody's like, oh, it sounds great. No. Not inside. No, that's no, true. No, it sounds terrible. That's true. Um, but the uh, but it, it drives great. But I used it, as we do all these press cars, as our daily car. Right. And it's right. our right. car. Right. It's not meant for that. It's meant for, oh, it's awfully nice out today on Sunday. Let's go take it for a spin. Right. You know, that, that kind of thing. It, yeah. And I, I'll admit I'm biased because I didn't use it like that. I didn't. I right. drove it in the snow too, which right. was weird. Um, great in the snow. That's Didn't think it was going to be good in the snow. Had summer tires. Holy cow! But but it has a like. Oh, it was a snow mode for that. There's a there's a there's a all weather mode. Yes, is what the they call. A it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. And uh, I didn't slide or slip once. And nice. I you know kept up with traffic. It was See, I had that car. I had that car for about. An hour on an 85 degree fall day, yeah. and it was the best hour that I had yeah, in a right, long time. Right. Yeah. Wheel. And then I had it for an hour on a <laughs> 30 degree day when it's cold and blustery. The and heater's I, yeah. excellent. Heater's excellent. The heater's great, yeah. but when the conditions aren't right and it's not perfect, it's not the car you want to be in. No. Right. Well, thanks guys. This has been fun. Limited Slip Blog. Scott, Chris, Danny's not here. Danny's not Check him out no. at limitedslipblog.com. Please. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it if you haven't already. Thanks for joining us, and I will see you guys in Detroit in January. We're about a month away, right? Yeah. Yes. A yeah. Month we away. will see you <laughs> I think from it is actually the, uh, a month away. Yeah, the Detroit Auto Show. We will yep. see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, Merry everybody. Christmas. Thank you. Holidays. See you soon.